Michelle Hamilton, and this is my French horn story video for Patrick's French horn giveaway contest. Um, this is not the video I expected I was going to be taking. This is not the video I expected I was going to be posting. Um, but I think God works things out with a purpose. And, you know, I spent the whole month of September because I was, I had seen your video within like an hour of you posting it. I was ecstatic. I was overjoyed. I was completely wild with emotion. And I immediately, in my mind, saw the video that I wanted to post. And it included footage of, of several different um, parts of my life um, and parts and times of my life. So I spent the month of September getting these videos and footage to put together and create the video. And today I was going to finish doing that. And the time I had set aside, we got a call from a family friend. They were in an emergency situation and needed us to help them out. We just got back. It's 11 o'clock here. I don't even know if my video will finish uploading in time to actually participate in the contest. I really, really hope so. Um, but God works all things together for good. So if not, then I had a fun time taking the videos, and it really encouraged me a lot. So... Um, I'm 20 years old. I live in Mexico, in Torreón, Coahuila. I am an MK, and for those of you who don't know what that means, it's a missionary kid. I grew up as one here in Mexico. I was homeschooled as well. Um, my family is very, very musical, and from a very young age, I was um, also kind of brought up musically, you could say. My grandmother she actually played the French horn. She was a very good French horn player. Unfortunately, I never got to see her French horn, and I never got to see her play the French horn because I'm told that when there was family problems, my grandparents had eight kids, and when they, were, when they had some family problems when the kids were young, they had to sell her French horn. So us grandchildren never actually got to see her play the French horn or see her French horn, but she did play the piano, and it was... It was my grandmother who taught me to play the piano when I was five years old. So officially, I am a pianist, not uh, a French horn player, but especially a pianist um, and just music in general my grandmother taught us to love. Of my whole family, though, I would say probably I'm the least musically inclined. Most of my uh, cousins are play several instruments and are very, very good musicians. I was part of the symphony orchestra ever since I, the city's symphony youth orchestra. Uh, since I was 12 years old, I was the pianist, the official pianist for the symphony orchestra. Mm -hmm. And ironically, I um, spent my years as a pianist sitting right behind the French horn section. And I would, there were a lot of times when I wouldn't play in pieces and I'd kind of just be sitting there. And I would observe the French horn a lot. The funny thing was, it never crossed my mind that I would ever learn to play the French horn one day. I knew a little bit of violin, because I learned when I was young. And like I said, I was officially a piano player. But nobody in my family played the French horn, except, except for my grandmother. Excuse me. Except for my grandmother. And nobody owned a French horn. And it was just not an instrument that ever crossed my mind that I would ever end up playing one day. Um, actually, I wanted to play the oboe, but when I saw how expensive they were, I knew it was completely out of the picture. There was no way I would ever be able to play the oboe. But anyway, as I was growing up as a pianist for the symphony orchestra, and I would sit behind the French horn, I would get to observe them a lot because I had them like right there. Uh, one thing I noticed was that they were always in trouble. They never could play properly on tune, on beat, beautiful. They could not produce a beautiful sound, a pretty sound, and um, I was thought, like, wow, is the French horn that difficult? Why can't they ever play properly? I mean, don't they practice, or what is their problem? Like, they don't even have to focus on two hands or reading in two clefs, um, and I remember thinking, wow, I can't wait until I actually get to meet a really good French horn player, because these are are kind of a sorry sight, um, and a sorry hearing as well. <laughs> anyway, the funny thing was, all those years, it never crossed my mind that I one day would be in their spot. 
I'm pretty sure I would have had a lot more compassion on them if I'd known that. But I didn't, and I was pretty mean, <laughs> at least in my mind. Um, so how do I come to be entering a French horn contest, or playing the French horn, because I do play the French horn? It's a pretty interesting story. Like I said, I never even crossed my mind to play the French horn. But in the symphony orchestra, there was a young man, well, an older man, he was 29 years old, who played the bass, but he also played a wide variety of other instruments. And he took it upon himself, ever since he was young, to collect and buy old instruments, collect them, and then lend them out to kids and teach them um, how to play these instruments, kind of get them started, get the basics, and then get them motivated into learning more with other professional teachers, and then hopefully help them start a plan of how to save money so that they could buy their own instrument, and then he could get his instrument back and lend it out to someone else. It was a really wonderful plan, and so far it worked very well. He did it especially for kids who didn't have much money or much hopes of ever learning an instrument or buying one. Uh, but anyway, he would give us rides back and forth from the orchestra practices, and one day, a year ago, we were in the car, and he told me, hey, would you give me piano lessons in return? I will lend you an instrument, and I'll start you on the basics. What do you think? And I said, sure, that sounds like a good bargain. What instruments do you have available right now? And he went through the list, and I don't know, but when he said French horn, I thought, that's the one. That's the one I want to learn. It was kind of new because I hadn't thought about it before. It wasn't even like at that moment I was thinking, I want to learn a new instrument and I want it to be the French horn. No. I don't know why I chose the French horn, but I did. So he brought the little mouthpiece over the next day and he's like, when you can get a buzzing noise from the mouthpiece, then we'll actually start actual classes. And I was like, oh, this must be difficult. I bet it's really hard. But once I get the buzzing noise out of the mouthpiece, I'll pr I'm pretty sure I'll have it all down pat. Well, I was able to get the noise right away, the buzzing noise, perfectly fine. I was even able to modify tones, uh, half tones, up and down a couple, a couple scales. Like, I mean, not scales, but like a couple tones up, a couple tones down. And he was pretty shocked. He like, whoa, it usually takes a little bit longer than pretty much immediately for people to do that, but all right, I guess we'll start with classes. Uh, so he began, he was the one who officially started me with the French horn. It was about November, October of last year. Um, the French horn he started me out with was a very old and battered French horn, but I was determined to not let it have the upper hand. I was determined that I would not be like those French horns that I'd grown up seeing in the symphony orchestra. I was going to get out there and crush them all, or so I thought in my very conceited pridefulness. Um, I soon learned that it was a difficult instrument, and I really struggled especially with that instrument in particular. Um, it presented a lot of technical difficulties, and I really, really struggled, although, I mean, I thought my advancement was terrible, but everyone around me was always, you're advancing really quickly, you're going really well, like, how, how are you being able to do this this fast? I mean, most people take forever before they can play a whole scale and range, and you've done it in a couple weeks. That's really, really good. But for me, it was, like, terrible. Like, I was used to sight reading and playing on the piano and maybe, yeah, having to practice the harder parts, but, you know, you could get it out in a day or two. And it was really hard for me to start from zero from the beginning with an instrument that I just could not tame, or so I thought. Finally, I took the instrument in to check and maybe get repaired because I thought for sh uh, the teacher or the friend that was teaching me thought that there must be something wrong. Um... So I took it in about November. I had been playing for about a month or so. And actually it was probably the 1st of December, I believe, I gave in the instrument for it to be checked. I didn't get back get it back until January of the next year. It was a heartbreaking time for me because I had fallen completely in love with the French horn. And I had really hoped over the winter vacations to practice a lot and to... Um, speed up my learning process in French horn. 
So it was really difficult for me to have to say goodbye to this dear old French horn and not get it back until January. When I got it back, um, the man who had checked it over for me told me, this French horn is unusable. You cannot use it. It does not work. And if you continue to try to learn on this French horn, you will never be able to play a real French horn your whole entire life. You will be doomed. Don't continue playing it. It's not usable. It's missing parts. It's not being able to fix. Um, I'm sorry. It's just someone put several French horns together or tried to piece put different pieces from different French horns together, made a complete mess, and made an idiot out of your friend by selling them this contraption, but it's useless. I was heartbroken when he told me that. I could not believe it because I had been looking so for, so much forward to, to, to learning the French horn, and it seemed so cruel and mean of him to tell me that. I mean, I knew it was true, but it was still hard for me to process. That's when my cousin came along. Now, my cousin, a couple, about two or three years earlier, had decided he was going to play the French horn. He bought one. He learned. Um, he never actually ever played publicly, or we never really, like, knew about it. I don't know. It was just, like, a quiet hobby of his that he kind of did off in the background and so much that I completely forgotten about it actually until he came up to me and he said hey look I want to strike you a deal would you like to use my French horn I'm not willing to sell it I'm not willing to give it away I'm not willing to give it up but I'll let you use it for a couple months until you decide whether you can buy your own or whether it's something you want to keep doing or not or whether you're even good at it or not and I was just overawed. I had been praying. I'd been kind of telling God, I don't know what to do. I really want to learn French horn. There's no way I can buy one. I was working, but as the oldest in my family, and we live in Mexico, and we kind of have financial problems. No, not kind of. We have financial problems. The money that I was earning while working, I had to give to the family or use it to buy personal needs that I had. Um besides giving a little bit to the family each week. So there was I knew there was no way I or my parents could afford to buy a French horn. So I was overawed when he offered that French horn to me. And I actually have it right here sitting next to me. It's a beautiful instrument. I have come to love this wonderful instrument. And I'm so thankful that he gave me the opportunity by lending this wonderful instrument to me. Um... I started officially classes with this instrument and an actual professional teacher in February thanks to the fact that at the symphony orchestra where I am they offer free classes to the kids who are part of the orchestra. So what I would do is I was playing the piano there. What I would do is I would go camp out, <laughs> camp out at the uh, the place where we practiced while they had, they had their classes early in the morning like each half hour. I would camp out for the whole three hours of classes that he gave to see if someone would miss for their class so that I could get a half hour free because they couldn't pay for classes either. So I would camp out and someone would miss or get there late and I would go in for five, ten minutes. If I was able to get the whole half hour, that was wonderful. And I started having classes that way. And in April, the teacher decided that I was ready to enter the symphony orchestra. Um, he went to go talk to the director, and the director was kind of shocked. He was like, wait, she's only been officially learning the French horn for two months, and you think she can play in the symphony orchestra? I don't think so. And the teacher begged him to give me a chance. So he tried me out, and I not only made it into the orchestra, but I wasn't even the last chair. There was six... Um, there were six French horns, but he decided that I played better than the French horn that they had right now, there in the last French in the last chair. So he moved me up one and moved him down. That was a shock, I think, to everyone. For one, it was a shock when I showed up and didn't go sit down to the piano, but went sit down in the French horn section. But secondly, when the teacher had me move, or when the director had me move up from the last chair, but to sit in the next to last chair, that was a shock for everyone, especially when they found I had only been going to actual classes for two months. Um, the problem was when it came time for a concert, the teacher, the director was like, "Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to play the piano or are you going to play the French horn?" Thankfully, they were able to find a pianist who stood in for me, and 
at the last moment, and I was able to play in June for my first concert, the French Horn. I absolutely loved it and enjoyed it. The problem is, since then, I know any day now my cousin is going to ask for his French Horn back. Um, he's kind of getting restless. He plays the cello, actually, very, very well. But he's been getting restless a little bit besides the fact that he hurt his arm quite badly and it's really hindering him with continuing with cello. So I know that he wants, while he gives cello a break, he wants to do something. And I'm almost 100% positive that he will soon ask me for my French horn, which is not mine. It's his to begin with. So he can ask for it whenever he wants. But it will be heartbreaking because I will be left with nothing. I have tried saving up ever since. And every time I have a little bit of money saved away, I have to use it for some emergency situation. Uh, whether it be family or other issues that have come up. And I just haven't been able to set aside enough money for a French horn. So when I saw your French horn giveaway, it was kind of like, well why not try you know why not try why not send in a video why not try for it see what happens and if not you know what it's okay God will provide and he's provided so far um, he's instilled this love in me of the French horn I think he's instilled a gift um, I think that he's provided so far of a French horn and every time I've come to a closed door or come to some difficult opportunity he's always provided a way so whether it's through your gift of the French horn to me or whether it's providing um, you know the money or a job with a money that I can set away and and a situation won't arise in which I'll have to use that money he will provide it and I'm just really looking forward to that and praying for it because I would really, really like to learn the French horn and continue learning the French horn to a professional degree. And I came upon your videos actually only a couple months ago, and I loved them. I love the way you play. I love your sound. And, well, the French horn really is new to me. All these, it's kind of new, because technically I've, I've had it, or technically I started a year ago, but officially I say I started in February of this year. So everything in the French horn world is new to me, but it's one that I've actually um, enjoyed for a long, long time. Well, I think this video is long enough. It's probably going to make the record for the longest video. I don't know how to be short and concise. I'm really sorry. I hope it makes it in time and that it finishes uploading in time. Um, but thank you very much for listening. And for anyone else watching, I'm sorry if I bored you to death. Um, but let me see. What did I want to close with? Well, like I said, this is not the video I originally planned. I took footage of me at my orchestra practice, me with my teachers. Um, I took a video of the man who gave me the original French horn with my original French horn that I learned on that was supposedly worthless and a piece of trash. I took videos of me playing. Um, I took videos of here of Mexico so you could get to see a little bit of the Mexican side of things in case you've never been to Mexico. But it didn't work out for some reason or other. So I'll just have to leave with this video. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you again very much for offering this opportunity. And, well, I don't think I have much else to say. That's my French horn story. A story of love. <laughs> and a story of God's faithfulness and God's providing in my life. Um, well, I guess that's it. Thank you very much.